And hello again, everyone, and welcome to another Monday night and another edition of Norse Nation. We're at the Mellow Mushroom Pizza Wilder here off of I-275, exit 77. That's the double-A highway. And as you do every Monday night from 7 to 8 p.m., we will talk Northern Kentucky University basketball, both on the men's and women's side. We'll talk about it on the men's side with head coach Dave Beasold and on the women's side with head coach Don Fritzel-White. I'm Jim Couch, along with the coach Steve Moeller. We invite you to come on down. You know the drill down here. When you come on down, you uh, get some of the best pizza in town here at Metal Mushroom. You buy one, you get one free. You don't get a better pizza deal anywhere in the uh, surrounding area. So we certainly invite you to come on down and join us here at the Mellow Mushroom Wilder. How did this last week go for the basketball teams on the men's side? A win on Saturday after a loss on Thursday to North Florida. A bounce back victory Saturday against Jacksonville. How did the women do? They were a double overtime loser on Thursday down at North Florida. And they also bounced back with a win on the road on Saturday against uh, Jacksonville. So Steve, as we look at the standings in the uh, the Atlantic Sun going into action this weekend. The North sit uh, very nicely in fourth place right now with a three and two conference mark. That's uh, right where you want to be. Uh, we're getting ready. After this weekend, this is amazing. After this weekend, we're halfway through the conference season. It seems unbelievable, but then we start back through, and uh, it, it's pretty quick turnaround before we head to the second half. North Florida right now sits atop the conference at 5-0. and oh. They're the team that NKU played, and we'll talk with Dave Beasel in a moment, then uh, defeated uh, NKU at the Bank of Kentucky Center on Thursday night, 74-66. to 66. They are 5-0. and oh. Florida Gulf Coast, who will be an opponent this weekend for the Norse, they sit at 4-1. and one. Their only loss coming on the 14th of January at North Florida, 80 to 64, and then uh, I don't know if it's a total surprise, but certainly an upstart Lipscomb team sitting right now at four and one, tied for second place in the conference. Lipscomb's only loss also came to North Florida. That was this past Saturday when uh, uh, Lipscomb won that game, 75 to 66. Yeah, Lipscomb is really, really tough at home. I know that. And uh, we, talking about some strange occurrences in the conference, here's South Carolina Upstate coming off two straight losses at home and uh, got a win this weekend. And uh, they improved to uh, two and three, but definitely not where uh, he thought he was going to be at this t point in the season either. We bring in the head coach of the Norse, Dave Beasold. And Dave, uh, congratulations on the win on Saturday. But let's start with the game on Thursday night against North Florida. I asked you how it went, and you said, hey, 17 turnovers, that's how it went. And uh, you guys don't commit that many turnovers on an average 11, 10 or so a game, and that uh, translated into 24 North Florida points against you. Was that the big thing that stuck out in your mind? Absolutely. I, I think it was one of those games where, you know, we, we never caught the lead um, second half on, but every time we were right there, something would happen with a turnover. We'd be in transition, they tip it from behind. Um, we'd make an errant pass, uh, something like that, and all of a sudden, instead of having an opportunity to catch them, uh, take the lead, all of a sudden, instead of being three or four points, now it's six or seven because of a turnover in transitional points. And it was one of those nights our kids wanted to do so well, I think we tried to do too much at, at, at times instead of letting the game come, but they're good. North Florida's a very good basketball team. Um, but again, the turnover, I really felt at the end of the day after watching the film again that that was one of the, the biggest issues. Coach, t two or three of those turnovers were shot clock violations. How do you coach a freshman or your point guards to be more cognizant of the shot clock and run the show on the floor as a, as a point guard should? That, that's got to be a tough thing to ingrain in them. Oh, absolutely. It's just a feel because, again, they're coming out of probably, what, 16 years of not having a shot clock when they're playing, and then all of a sudden they have to be aware of it uh, and trying to do all kinds of other things to manage the game. Uh, but it is. It was one of those things that it shouldn't happen maybe once, maybe. Um, but if you ha have a, a, an experienced team, it probably won't happen. Uh, but, uh, again, it's a learning experience, and those are going to happen a, a ton of times with, with a young point guard. When you control tempo, what, like you have to do is not a lot, but when you want to control the tempo of a ball game, typically when do you want your guards to, to instigate the offense and, and start looking for the bucket? At, at what 
point in time on the shot clock? I would say 15 and under. Yeah. I, we, we really want to be aggressive then and, and take a great shot or get the best shot then. Um, but before that happens, uh, I, I think with a young point guard too, sometimes they stand around and there's not created a lot of movement. So th there's a balance in, in things like that that you want to be able to do. Uh, but, but again, um, I, I think we're starting to, to come along with it, some of those things and uh, it'll just keep getting better. Right. Hindsight being 20-20 vision, you played arguably the best team in the league in North Florida. And you played them to an eight-point ball game. And as you just stated, you were right there on a couple of instances where a, a bucket here or a bucket there would have put you over the top. Looking back, what do you take positively and what do you take negatively from that ball game? Positively, I think offensively we had really good balance. I think we did a tremendous job inside. Um, I'd like to have gotten to the free throw line a few more times. Uh, and then uh, I think negatively, um, it was the turnovers. And then some, it wasn't the players, it was the coaching that we're going to do some things adjusting. We have to make a couple more adjustments defensively. Um, thought about them the whole game, didn't didn't go to them, but we, we'll know what we'll want to get to. So again, I, th I thought there were a lot of good things out of it, but there's some things that next time we run into each other that we'll be ready for. That game on Thursday again ended up in a loss for NKU, 74-66 to North Florida. In that game, Chad Jackson had a double-double, 26 points and 12 rebounds. That's a new career high for him. And Jalen Billups continues his assault with 18 points, five rebounds, and only 24 minutes in that game. Coach, let's move on to the Saturday game then against Jacksonville. You come out a winner in that one, 81 59, a 32-point win. It marks uh, a big victory for you guys. You're led by 11 at halftime. The big issue for you guys in that one, what was the uh, the turning point? Well, I think we, we played really good defense. I, I really did. And then uh, that, that allowed us to get some transitional points that allowed some other things to happen. And, and then we didn't have to rely so much on offense. Um, so, but, but the one thing that we're going to have to do that happened in both games were to beat a great team, especially on the road, to win at Florida Golf Coast, to get uh, North Florida next time. There are moments in those games where if, if someone's guarding a shooter, we, we didn't have our hands in. And they got that they were able to measure and shoot the basketball. And that happened a couple times early in Stetson, um, or I'm sorry, uh, Jacksonville, where you know it's an eight to 10 point game and all of a sudden we drop our hands and one of their best shooters hits a three. And then all of a sudden you're going, okay, fellas, come on, exactly right, defensively, fundamentally, exactly right. And that's when we're really good. You're right, so you played the second half against Jacksonville, a very, very good half defensively, and you hit the nail on the head. A lot of times kids will get, they'll watch the ball, especially when they're off the ball, and they wind up standing up and playing straight-legged, and then when the ball gets swung, they don't get down and get their knees bent and be in a position. Causes them to bump a guy with their body or reach with their hands, resulting in sending the other team to the foul, foul line. But yeah, it, it, that's, a, that's a tough thing to teach. But it's, it's something that's necessary. Great teams do it, good teams do it. And in order to win on the road like we're going to, we're going to have to do that. And I can still see it in, uh, in the Thursday night game with Bo Beach. We helped off and stopped the basketball when we weren't supposed to or we didn't have a hand. And late in the game, they buried a couple big threes because of those fundamentals that we didn't adhere to. And those are something that you have to grow up and be able to do second time around. In that game, the 81-59 win, four players for NKU ended up in double figures, led by uh, Taylor Persons, who had 18 in that game, coming off of uh, probably his worst collegiate game in which he did not score in the North Florida game. A 17.5 rebound effort for Jalen Billups. That marks four consecutive games in which he has scored in double figures. Chad Jackson, 15.7 boards in that game, and Tyler White, 13 points, including three threes. Deontay Cole in that game also had three threes. You guys out uh, manned them in the paint 38 to, uh, to 22. I wanted to make a statement and a question. When you were set up offensively, high post, low post, with Chad Jackson and Jalen, sometimes it was uh, Jordan Jackson, sometimes it was Tyler White. When the ball went to low post and the guy at the high post ran the smash cut down the lane, you guys did a really, really good job attacking the rim out of that high-low set. And, and I, I was very impressed with it. And, and your thoughts on that? 
Well, I just think they're getting very comfortable in understanding the positioning and when the ball goes into Jalen, what, what avenues are open and things like that. Um, and they're talking about it to each other every time out. And they're saying, hey, this is what we're seeing. This is what we've got to do. And, and bringing up Chad's, uh, I, I think Chad's been so, so energetic. Yes. He, he's getting so much done off the ball and keeping so many um, plays alive. When the ball goes up, he tips the ball. He, he, they may have him for five rebounds, but it's, it's like he t touches ten 15 yeah. extra balls to keep him alive. Um, so his energy uh, has been tremendous, and that's why you see the production going up right now. And the other thing you won't see on that stat sheet, Tyler White probably may have been his best defensive performance ever. Uh, he guarded Meisters, who's, who's been having a heck of a year for Jacksonville, and, and uh, really did a tremendous job on him. All right, NKU won one, lost one this week. A win on Saturday against Jacksonville after suffering a loss on Thursday to the University of North Florida. They will go into action this weekend with a record of nine wins, 11 losses overall, but three and two in a sun play. We'll step aside, come back and talk more NKU men's basketball with the Mellow Mushroom Wilder. Come on down. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to see you. From Learfield Sports, this is the NKU Sports Network on Fox Sports 1360. Back to Mellow Mushroom Wilder here on uh, Highway 275, the Double A Highway. We'd love to have you come on down if you're so inclined. Come on down, buy a pizza, get a pizza. We will be talking NKU basketball, both on the men's and women's side, until the top of the hour. I'm Jim Kelch. Steve Moeller is alongside. Dave Bezold is here, and we are very pleased in a portion of this segment to have junior Todd Johnson with us. Todd, welcome to the program, and I hope you're going to get enough pizza tonight to make you feel good. Uh, of course. Thanks for having me. Listen, uh, there can be no talk of, of anything with you this year without going back to that South Carolina Upstate game a week or so ago when you uh, did not score in the first half, then knocked down four threes in the second half in a pressure-packed game, which you guys won 66-65. Congratulations on the effort in that game, the win in that game for you guys, and uh, talk about how it was for you out there. Uh, it was great. Um, Coach, was he put me in the game, and he had me on the – the left wing slash corner area, and he was like, Todd, if you have one, knock it down. And they were in that zone, and Taylor Parsons did a good job, and everybody did a good job in looking for me, and I knocked it down. Jim, you got to see Todd make the threes out of the corner down at Upstate. What you didn't get to see, you were on the uh, Reds Caravan this last weekend. Saturday afternoon, Todd took matters into his own hands. He pressured whoever was bringing the ball up, whoever he was matched against. He had five steals Saturday afternoon and really showed a lot of hustle and aggressiveness playing defensively and really turned the ball game around with his floor play uh, on Saturday. And uh, actually, he uh, only had seven points, but the seven points were negligible. It was all his defensive effort and his hustle that set up a large part of the win on Saturday. Well, Todd, how has it been for you this year? Because last year, before the, the injury to your ankle that ended your season early, you started every game. This year, that's not been the case for you. What kind of adjustment has that been? Uh, it's, it was a hard adjustment for me, but I mean, we, we had to change some things for our team to get, get better. And I mean, I just, I'm just doing and filling my role. That role in your mind is? Uh, that coming off the bench and sparking energy. I feel like when I come in the game, especially the, the, the last game we played, I, I felt like I went on the bench, I said, those guards are really, they're not that good with the ball. So I wanted to get up in them and pressure them a little bit and see if they could turn it over. And lucky I got a few. It's important in any sport when you're not playing to pay attention to what's going on in the bench. And you just made a great point. You're, you're watching and seeing what the guys are doing out there, knowing, hey, if I get in, I need to do this, I need to do that. It's important to pay attention and be in the game when you're not in the game, isn't it? Yeah, it, it's very hard for me because this is my first time ever, you know, saying really, except for my freshman year, I came off the bench too. So, I mean, it's been, it's a different experience for me, but we all have our roles and I just wanted to play my role and when I get in the game, do what I, I'm capable of doing. Coach, when we go to uh, DeLand on uh, Thursday, what kind of special problems does Corey Williams, uh, Stetson Hatters pose for you guys going ahead and down there trying to even up our record here? Well, they've got some tremendous size down there, and then they've got a young man named Smith who's about 6'7", 6'8", forward, who's a tremendous player, and, and I think he's one of those kids that can play anywhere, and for any team we've already played, uh, he's a very good player. 
Um, but I really like where we are right now as a team. When you listen to Todd, I, I think they're starting to settle in their roles. And really, Jalen and Todd are embracing coming off the bench. And just he, he understands, hey, when I get out there, it's going to be a, I've got this energy burst. And now he's he's picking up things on the bench and going, okay, I can get this guy. He knew Jacksonville. He knew that you know they're bigger guards and they don't really like to be pressured. So he he saw that going in. And like you said, there was a stretch at about 45 seconds where he had three steals and they were amazing. And all of a sudden, the crowd's into it. The, he, he got us going. And again, it didn't about scoring. It was about his effort and energy. And all of a sudden, when that crowd got electric, all of a sudden, you know, we, we got out to a spurt. And that's what these guys are doing. They're embracing their roles. They understand it. And uh, let's go get some wins. Todd, you hear uh, Coach Bezo talking about how he perceives this team as moving forward. You guys have won three of your last four games. But prior to that, you had lost four in a row. You lose at Northwestern in a game that we all went into thinking, hey, they're capable of winning this game up there in Chicago. You go to Youngstown State, you lead most of that game, and it falls away. Again, Toledo, you don't, you don't trail until the last basket against the Rockets. They get the three and beat you. And then you go down to Lipscomb and kind of lay an egg and, and lose that. Is there a different mindset, a different feel within the team now than there was, say, after that Lipscomb game? Yeah, it, it is. We took that to heart, you know what I'm saying? And we went down there, and we really didn't play that good, and we know we didn't play that good. So these last few games that we've been playing, we know we, we're a better team than what we played at Lipscomb, and we've been practicing hard and wanting to go out there and show what, every, what we're capable of doing. Steve? When uh, going, I, I want to talk about the schedule and how it sets up. Headed to Stetson first and then Gulf Coast, I'd rather have it set up that way. You're two games below 500. Now we go to Stetson. Got a chance to build on what we did Saturday against Jacksonville, then go to Gulf Coast. And uh, we played Gulf Coast really tough last year, especially down there when we went to with uh, a change in defenses. It really set them, you know, back on their heels a little bit. And uh, they're not nearly the Florida Gulf Coast team of a couple of years ago when they went to the Sweet 16. What are your, were you as a player going down, make any difference who you play first? Uh, not really, but okay. like you said, I re we'd rather play Stetson first and get a, get a go, go in there with it, knowing that we were, that's a capable game that we can go in there and win. And when we go to Golf Coast, that's a, that's a game we can get as well too, but we ha we're gonna have to play great. Listen, Todd, thank you for stopping by. Thanks for coming down. Enjoy the pizza tonight. We're going to flip-flop you and Tyler White out, and uh, we look forward to uh, watching you play again this weekend. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Junior guard Todd Johnson from Elkhart, Indiana with us. We'll swap him out with uh, Tyler White and get up here. So as Tyler makes his way up, we'll talk to Dave Beasold. And uh, Coach, uh, Steve was mentioning about the, the, uh, the Stetson team, which we will see really coming off a, a hard way to go this year. They've lost five games in a row. They only have four players back from last year's team. They only have, due to uh, injury and the like, only nine active players. They really only, well, they play them, but they only really have six, maybe seven guys that are in their rotation. You certainly, I guess, will try to take advantage of that. We hope so, but again, we'll get down there and we'll, we'll get a feel for the game. And we have an idea of what we want to do. And, and sometimes you never know what will happen during the game early and you may have to change a few things. But yeah, I, I think our depth and things are, are, are going to be a, a strong advantage in this game. And like I said, we go down there and do what we're supposed to do, handle ourselves um, offensively and defensively. We'll, we'll be fine and we feel good about you know this road trip. All right, well, let's bring in another junior then, Tyler White from Lima, Ohio. He's a 6'3", 190-pound uh, junior shooting guard. Tyler, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me. You bet, you bet. So far this year, you are uh, the team's leading three-point shooter in terms of uh, field goals made with 39. You've also taken more than anybody else by far at 113. <laughs> <laughs> and that's not meant derogatorily, but the, your game is a perimeter game, is it not? Yes, it is. It definitely is. Tyler's one of those kind of players, Coach, uh, Coach Kelch, that's <laughs> never seen a shot he didn't like. <laughs> but hey, and Coach has got faith in him that you've got the green light. He's never, I don't think, maybe in a given situation, he's never told you not to shoot it or not to put it up. And, and that's a good feeling for a shooter, isn't it? Yes, it's definitely a great feeling that you know your coach has confidence in you, and it just makes you want to step up and take the big shots at times like that. Now, when you played at Lima Senior, were you in the GMC then as well? No, we were in the uh, track. It was the um, okay. Three Rivers Athletic Conference. Okay. They had changed. It was a new conference my senior year. Basically, Toledo schools and us. So you were in the GMC prior to that? Yeah. That was a lot of travel, wasn't it? Yes, yes. Every, I mean, every trip, every trip he took, his freshman, sophomore, and junior year was a two-hour ride. Sounds like the Florida Gulf Coast League, uh, Florida uh, State League <laughs> in baseball. Everything's a monster trip. <laughs> 
coach gives you some pretty tough assignments, doesn't he? Yes, he does. Yeah, he does. Who, who's been the toughest first time through the league? Now, not counting Gulf Coast and Stetson because we haven't played them, but of the first time through the league so far, who's been your toughest challenge to guard? Um, in the league. I would say Ty Green. Ty Green? Yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a good pick. Yeah. What about what about in the pre-conference games, uh, Northwestern, Nebraska, uh, Wisconsin? I think the toughest was actually Eastern Washington's Tyler Harvey. Good pick there, too. Yeah, he's that, he's at, I think right now he's like the number two scorer in the country. Yeah. yeah, he's, yeah he was tough. Yeah. Tyler, we talked about you being an offensive player, a good outside shooter, and, and Coach Bezold early on in the show was praising the defensive job that you did uh, this weekend. Practicing offense, becoming a better offensive player is fun. It's not necessarily that much fun, though, to work hard to become a better defensive player, though, is it? No, not at all. Sometimes when Coach assigns these players, I think about it. Like, he would call me into his office and show me the film clips on the players or whatever. And I'll actually study it a little bit and see what he likes to do. And then like, I start pressuring him a little bit and just see if I can get up under his skin a little bit. That's about it, yeah. When you go to the playground to play in the summer or when you're in high school, you never go out there and see any break, anybody break down and get in the defensive slide and slide back and forth, do you? No, not really. But <laughs> actually, in like, my hometown, a lot of people would, like talk trash if you're getting scored on. So like, that kind of makes me want to be a better defender, basically. So you guys go into this weekend again uh, on a Thursday down at Stetson, Saturday at Florida Gulf Coast. Steve was talking about the lineup of how they line up. You come off a victory against Jacksonville, you go down to Stetson, a team that has not won a conference game yet. I would think that that's a good way to set it up because you win down there, and again, you don't want to put the cart before the horse, but you go down there, you give a good effort, you win. You gotta be feeling pretty good about yourself going into Florida Gulf Coast with an opportunity to get back to 500 again, I would think. Yes, definitely, especially we know that uh, Stetson is capable of winning games and making shots. That can, anybody can lose any given night, but it actually does fit better for us because we can come in and if we play great, we'll have, get into a nice little rhythm and then by the time we play Florida Gulf Coast, we can have things rolling. Tyler, listen, thank you for coming down here. Enjoy the pizza with uh, the rest of the folks here. Thanks for coming on the program, and we look forward also to watching you perform this weekend. Thanks for having me. Junior Tyler White from Lima, Ohio, another one of the uh, Norris players that joins us up here at the Mellow Mushroom Waller on Norris Nation. Coach Bezold, uh, we look forward to bringing the, the uh, NKU fans to games on Thursday down at Stetson, Saturday at Florida Gulf Coast. We look forward to talking to you before the game uh, each day, and uh, let's hope things go well. Absolutely, and the one key thing about Tyler I want to hit on real quick was he had to embrace defense. And he's a scorer coming to high school. And you know that, Steve. Yeah. We needed somebody to do that step up. We lost Ethan Faulkner, who, who played that role, and Tyler's really embraced it and, and takes a lot of pride in it now, and that's special. That's, that's All tremendous. right. You know, real, qu real quickly, he does that very well, and he does it without fouling, which is very important. All right. Again, Coach, thanks for stopping by, and uh, we'll take a break here. When we come back, we'll switch gears and talk NKU women's basketball with head coach Don Plitzelwhite. We'll do that right after this from Learfield Sports. This is the NKU Sports Network on Fox Sports 1360. All right, second half hour of North Nation here at Metal Mushroom Wilder. We'd love to have you down here. If not tonight, certainly in the weeks to come as we talk NKU basketball. First half hour on the men's side, second half hour on the women's side, and we are pleased to have Coach Don Plitzelwhite of the uh, NKU women's team with us. And uh, Coach, you, like Coach Bezold, coming off one win, one loss this past weekend. Your first loss, however, had to have been excruciating. A double overtime loss down at North Florida, 81 to 79. That was, uh, that was a tough one to <laughs> take, wasn't it? Well, it was tough, but at the same time, what was good to see is that our kids fought back. We hit a three to tie it and put it into overtime. Uh, we hit a, a, a really tough shot in the paint over a 6'3 athlete that was blocking shots to put it into double overtime. In both the overtime periods, we had to come, or in the end, end of the game in the first overtime period, we had to play solid defensively uh, to se secure it, at least keep it, and go into an extra session. And so those are all really, really good things for us to build off of, and I was really proud of our kids' composure and the way that they fought during that battle. Yeah, you mentioned the three. Uh, Christine Roush hit the three to tie the game at the end of regulation. And uh, Casey Utrecht uh, had a layup that tied the game late in the first overtime. Those are clutch, Those pressurized are clutch. baskets, aren't they? Well, they are. We were, uh, North Florida was at the free throw line. We sent Mel and Christine deep into the corners. 
Kid missed the free throw. Rihanna got it, pushed it down the court, skipped it across the court, long pass. Christine's got a kid flying at her and knocks it in in the corner to send us into overtime. So those are, are great things for us to build upon. And you know what? I, I was excited about the way that our kids had showed some resiliency. I, I was a little concerned. I was looking at your stats, and uh, I see where out of the 50 minutes, young lady that you're going to have up here shortly, Christine Roush, she played all 50 minutes. Well, not only did she play 50 <laughs> minutes, but she usually is assigned right now to defend the other team's best three-point shooter and, and best offensive player a lot of times on the perimeter. So she's she's doing a lot in those 50 minutes for us. She didn't have any problem getting to sleep that night, I, I doubt. No, I, I think you're probably <laughs> correct at that. So you lose on Thursday, 81 to 79. You travel, uh, you don't really have to travel anywhere. This Correct. is the Jacksonville trip. And you take on uh, the Jacksonville Dolphins and you win that one by 11, 70 to 59. We didn't mention that Christine Roush in the game on uh, Thursday night had 28 points, including six threes. She bounced back uh, on Saturday afternoon with a 22 point effort that included four threes. You win 70 to 59. That sets you up very nicely then for this weekend. Your overall mark at 12 and eight, but your conference mark tied for third at three and two with uh, directly ahead of you, Stetson and Florida Gulf Coast. Ever since you guys have been in the league, that's how it always seems to be, doesn't it? It does. Those two teams have been the, the premier teams in our conference, and, and now we have a chance to take on both of those teams at, on, on our home court. And then we play Lipscomb, and then we go back and we play them again on their home court. So this is really a, a very big stretch for us, uh, a, a very important stretch, although I think every coach would probably say every week is a very important stretch for your season. What I'm excited about, and I told our players this today, is that Really, we, we have a motto of Calitera during the course of this year, which is a Greek word meaning to get better, to improve. And what was exciting for us as coaches during the last trip that we took to Jacksonville is that we got better as a team during that trip. We played probably, we didn't start the game at Jacksonville the way we wanted to. We were down 21 to 10, but it wasn't necessarily because we weren't playing hard or weren't doing the things that we wanted to do. We weren't, we were maybe an eighth of an inch away from getting a, a rebound from a really good athlete. You know, at this point in time, for all coaches everywhere, men, women, makes no difference. As you get deep into the season and you make a trip where you play two games during a five-day stretch, it's so important for the kids to come together and interact with one another, and that builds your team camaraderie. It, it, Absolutely. It's just so important to, to teams. and people outside of athletics, they really don't realize that, do they? Well, and U.S. Airways thought that we would want to spend some more time together, so <laughs> we got to stay again on Saturday night and spend some more time bonding together. So we actually, our trip was extended a little bit. And, and you know what, it, what's really neat about this group of young ladies is that they really have an incredible camaraderie. They have great togetherness. And then what I thought really helped us during this trip is that our toughness level improved during the course of this, these two games. And so that was good. We have toughness, we have togetherness, we're improving. Uh, but, you know, certainly we're excited about that as we head into, you know, a critical stretch of our season. Some coaches will do anything to stay in Florida. An That's right, day. isn't it? I know. <laughs> a negotiate little, with the airlines a little bit. <laughs> a little travel snafu, I take it. Well, a little, uh, I think, mechanical errors. But you know what? I'm all about let's be safe first. So. <laughs> there you go. Well, let's look ahead then because you have a huge weekend at home this coming weekend. Thursday night at 7 at the Bank of Kentucky Center against the Stetson team, which right now stands at 4-1 and one in conference play. And then Saturday night at 7, you host the Florida Gulf Coast, which right now is undefeated in conference play at 5-1. And, oh, and let's talk uh, quickly about uh, a Stetson team that is 4-1 and one in the conference, 15 and four overall. They have a big a, a 6-3 uh, Amber Porter, who is a preseason all-conference player. How good is she? She's really, she's a long, thin, athletic kid that when you look at her, you're trying to figure out how she can compete with all the physical bodies in this league. But she does. She's agile. She can shoot it. She drives it. They use her with her back to the basket. They use her facing the basket. She blocks a lot of shots. She really has been a game changer for Stetson. And they have a point guard, Jamma Sharp, who has done a tremendous job for them. They're very well coached. They're disciplined. I think what both those two teams do probably better than any other teams in our league is that one, they really can score on you, and they can score on you in bunches. Yeah, they push it up the court. So you're their transition offense is very, very effective. Your conversion defense has to be very solid or as solid as it can be. They both shoot the ball extremely well from the arc. They're both highly athletic and can get to the rim. And they both have a big kid that can either block shots, alter shots, make things very difficult for you. So they are, both teams are very, 
uh, have, have the complete package, really. We'll come back after the break, talk more about this upcoming weekend for the women, including the Florida Gulf Coast team, and uh, maybe look back uh, briefly at what happened a year ago when Florida Gulf Coast came uh, to town. We'll talk uh, that over with Coach Plitzelwhite, and we'll also have uh, junior Christine Rausch with us, one of the players on this NKU women's team. But all that coming up after we break from the Mellow Mushroom Wilder from Learfield Sports. This is the NKU Sports Network on Fox Sports. 1360. We continue with Norse Nation here at the Mellow Mushroom Wilder until the top of the hour. We're talking with Don Plitzelwhite, the head coach of the NKU women's team. We'll also have Christine Rausch coming in here in a moment. But, uh, Don, before we broke, we were talking about this upcoming weekend. You have Stetson on Thursday. Then you have the bully in the room in the conference, Florida Gulf Coast. The Eagles coming in on Saturday. That uh, is a potential game, depending on how things go, uh, uh, that could put you in a tie for first place. They are 5-0, and oh, Stetson 4-1. and one. You go into the weekend at 3-2, and two, and let's look back a year ago. It was early February last year. They came to town owning a 44-game conference winning streak, and you not only beat them, you beat them like a drum, 63-43. to 43. What, do you, what do you remember about that? Our players played at such a high level defensively. I think that we... We did such a good job, our players did such a good job defensively. I think there were at least three or four, maybe even five shot clock violations during the course of that game. What's been interesting to see, though, is how uh, I really believe Florida Gulf Coast has kind of changed their offense a little bit so that they, they've spaced a little bit differently. They have a little bit different movement since that point in time. So, you know, I, I, th I was really, really proud that our kids came out and competed the way that they did. And, and going into the game, you know, we, we really believed they, play, they really play an aggressive style, and so you can either try to stay, you know, with, within a, a sizable area with them, or you can just go for it. But if you go for it, you may end up on top, but you may end up getting blown out, too. So uh, we went for it, I guess. I don't well, know. I can tell you this, and the people in this room know, and the people around northern Kentucky know, you came in here kind of unheralded, and you might have snuck up on some people in the past, but you're not sneaking up on anybody in the future. They, they recognize right. what a good coach you are. Well, thank and you. it's going to be a real challenge for your kids because Florida Gulf Coast is going to come in here ready. Right. They, the, I'm sure they haven't forgotten. But the best thing about it is you're playing well right now. You got them at home. And, you know. Well, now, you can be the bully on the block. Well, we're not even close to that at this point in time. But Florida Gulf Coast has, has earned the right to be where they are. They put five kids on the court. They play a style that's a little bit different than a lot of teams. They space the floor, and they either get all the way to the rim or they kick it out and shoot threes. Half of their shots on the year are three-point shots. They're one of the leaders in the nation, if not the leader in the nation, in three-point attempts. Um, and sometimes three-point players made in games. They've made up to 33, I think, one, uh, two years ago in a game. And it's just unbelievable how they can shoot the basketball. And, and then not only just shoot, they play a hard-nosed style. And so now they're flying kids. A lot of times when teams shoot it from the arc, they don't offensive rebound very well, but this team does. And then they defend you really well. I think they get a lot of credit for how they score the ball. But really, they are where they are because they defend extremely well. When you prepare for a ball club like this, Tell us about your preparation in transition defense and how you get back and how you're going to cover the shooters while they're still trying to run the break on you. <laughs> well, Christine might be able to answer that. No, we, we actually took a look at, on film today. The two top teams in our league are very, very good in transition offense, but they both go about doing it in very different ways. And so, you know, our first point of emphasis is, is really just – one, we want to get to the offensive glass still. We don't want to concede, concede getting offensive rebounds. But then, you know, an all-out effort, an all-out effort to get back. There. We have a conversion point, a pickup point, and then, you know, some different principles on who matches up where, how we find kids, you know, what, who, what we're trying to get out of it. But really, I, I think our, our players really have to be locked in uh, on their effort to get back and get into a hard stance, and that's really a tough thing to do. Yep. All right, let's bring in Christine Rouse. She's a 5'11 junior from Louisville, Kentucky, and Mercy Academy. Christine, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me. How are you feeling tonight? Feeling good? Yeah, I'm feeling great. Hey, you had a great weekend in terms of point-wise. Thursday at North Florida, 28 points, which is one shy of your career high. Six threes in that game, including mm -hmm. we were talking about earlier, uh, the three that sent it into overtime. How did you feel on that when Coach said there was a player flying at you? That must have taken a lot of concentration. Well, I was just grateful that Rihanna got the ball to me. 
And I was also grateful that Sheree, she was actually in the play sort of beside me, and she told me she didn't know I was in the corner, and she was about to grab the ball, but decided not to. So I'm grateful she didn't grab the ball so she could, I could grab the shot and take it. Was there any doubt in your mind about putting it up? No, there was no doubt. I knew once it was coming to me, I had the shot, and I, everyone had the confidence in me to make it too. So I felt Be pretty good about myself. Before you came up here, we talked, Coach and I were talking, she played you 50 minutes in the double <laughs> overtime game, and then 34 in the next game. You, had, you didn't have any trouble sleeping that those <laughs> nights, did you? I was a little, you know, sore and exhausted from the games. <laughs> but um, in the first game where I played 50 minutes, I had a lot of energy throughout the whole game. There was one point, though, in the, the second the double overtime where I was just completely beat, but, you know, yeah. I stuck it out all the way to the end. Let's, uh, let's change gears here a little bit. You're also an academic All-American. Mm -hmm. And I've always believed that athletes that compete on the court, on the field, on the diamond, how could they not compete then in the classroom? Obviously, you adhere to that premise. Yes, I really do. Um, I feel like as a student athlete, I should be really concerned about my academic academics. And I'm really playing basketball here. I'm more focused on graduating and earning my degree and Good moving on to my life and starting my career. Good for you. And majoring in biological sciences, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. To do what? Um, to become a physician assistant. Okay. Good mm -hmm. for you. Thank you. Christine, what led you up here to uh, Highland Heights in Northern Kentucky? How did that whole process work? Um, well, actually, Coach Don didn't recruit me. Uh, the previous coach, Nancy Winstall, she uh, liked our coach, my high school coach a lot, and she knew a lot of players from there. And actually recruited some of the older girls from my high school team, and she really liked me and my sister, Courtney Roush. And she convinced us to come up here. And at first I really didn't think much of Northern Kentucky until I finally got up on campus and realized just how great of a campus it is and all that's going on. We talked last week with, uh, I forget now who was here, but uh, how Rihanna great. Gayhart. Yes, that's exactly right. Thank you, Steve. About how great it is to play at the Bank of Kentucky Center. Mm -hmm. Can you uh, talk about that? Oh, yes. We have a great atmosphere. We have a great amount of fans that come to our game that show their support. And it's just great being in the, um, being on the home court, having that much support, and having a lot of our family members that are close by come to our games as well. You're the leader in the Atlantic Sun Conference and free throw shooting percentage at 88%. You're also uh, ranked with uh, blocks and um, steals. A and Coach and I talked about this a little bit off air. It, I think it's very unfair for the NCAA not to have you be able to be ranked. Jalen Billups would be third in the country in field goal shooting percentage not allowed to be ranked because we're in the probationary period mm -hmm. becoming Division One. How unfair and how unthoughtful and uncaring of the NCAA for the student athlete. I'll get down off my soapbox. <laughs> Are you off the box yet? Can <laughs> we continue? I'm off the soapbox. Go ahead. Christine, you play, you mentioned with your, your twin sister Courtney on this team. You played with her in high school. You played with her up here. How important is it, was it for you guys to go to the same school? Um, well, we told coaches when they were recruiting us that it didn't matter what school we wanted to to be, we could go either together or apart, it didn't matter. And it really worked out in our favor to be together because I probably wouldn't be able to handle myself if I went to college without her. So she's always been there for me and we're, we've been roommates for life. So it's, so it's, it's been great having it's, her with it's, me. It's fun to have your twin sister here <laughs> going to college with you, going yes. through the experience of not only uh, uh, athletics, but academics also. Yes. We have somewhat of the same major, and we have some classes together, so we like to compete a lot with our academics. <laughs> same, so. same kind of study habits or no? Oh, uh, yeah, quite, okay. quite similar. Right. Yes, yes, yes. Christine, thank you so much for coming by tonight and sharing some of your story with us, and uh, good luck this weekend with two huge games against Stetson Thursday and against Florida Gulf Coast on Saturday. Thank you. Okay, Christine Roush, junior player on the women's team, and Dawn, thank you for thank coming you. by as always, and uh, we wish you guys good luck. We'll keep track of your scores when we're doing the games down in Florida. That'd be great. Thank you, gentlemen. All right. Don Plitzel White, the head coach of the women's team here at NKU. Steve and I take a break, come back with our one final segment to wrap things up on Mellow Mushroom right after this from Learfield Sports. This is the NKU Sports Network on Fox Sports 1360. All right, our final segment of uh, this week's show. We have about two and a half minutes or so. We want to touch on a couple of things, most notably 
the fact that the uh, the men's games, of course, will be heard here on iHeartRadio this coming weekend. Thursday, the team will be down in DeLand, Florida, to take on the Stetson Hatters. They are picked to finish eight out of eight schools in the A-Sun this year. They'll bring a record into that game of 0-5 in conference play, 5-15 and overall. That game will be uh, heard on Fox Sports 1360, uh, beginning at 6.30 with our pregame show, 7 o'clock with the, uh, the tip. They've made a lot of changes down there in terms of personnel, and you brought up earlier the fact that uh, uh, NKU won the game down there last year with that last second tip in by uh, Jake Geisler. Yeah, Jake Geisler got the tip in last year off a miss out of, from Tyler White out of the uh, right corner after a steal on an inbounds pass. And if you remember, you and I were sitting there at half court, and I said, well, if we could force him to throw that thing into the backcourt, maybe we could get a steal. And, Hadn't gotten out of my mouth, and Anthony Monaco and Tyler White make the play, and the rest, as they say, is history. But um, be a good trip down there. Hopefully, things go well against Stetson, and the team will be a game under 500 and uh, two over 500 in conference play going into that game on Saturday night. Remember the game at Florida Gulf Coast last year? It was a, a nail biter right down to the bitter end. Yeah, and it'll be a packed Alico Arena, mm -hmm. and it's called it's called Dunk City. That's kind and of their that's, theme from that's two years ago. That's their theme, and e their women's team follows up on that, too, with the way they run and, and attack the, the basket. And so yeah, it's going to be a really great weekend, and, um, you know, it, it'll be warm, I hope. What do you think of this? Uh, Florida Gulf Coast playing Lipscomb on Thursday. They host Lipscomb first. They're tied for second in the conference first. Uh, for, in, in, for second place in the conference, they play them first, and then NKU, depending on how that game goes, particularly if they lose, you might catch them a little bit down. Yeah, but I'll tell you what, their home record, uh, Joe Dooley, who uh, right. coaches Florida Gulf Coast, is a Bill Self protege. And uh, I talked with uh, Joe on the phone today. Um, they're, they really aren't looking forward to us coming in there. He's, they're afraid of the Norse. All right, a couple of notes. The spring sports coming up. Things are really starting to cook up now. The, uh, the women's tennis team has a couple of matches this week. They play Sunday down at the University of Louisville. They play Tuesday at UK, so good luck to the women's tennis team this week. The track and field team, they have been very busy, and they'll be busy again this weekend. Both the men's and women's team are playing in the Thundering Herd Open in Huntington, West uh -oh. Virginia at Marshall, so we wish them Good luck over there. We also want to say a special hello tonight to former NKU coach Kenny Shields, who is in the house here at the Mellow Mushroom. Uh, that'll close things out for this week. Remember, next week the show will be on ESPN uh, 1530. All right, James Rapine has been our man back in the studio tonight. On site, Rick Uccino for Steve Moeller. This is Jim Kelch. Thanks for tuning in and listening to Norse Nation.